what is going on guys i'm coming back at you with another video today um i sit here in the wrecked car kind of got some organized chaos going on here i've been cleaning it up i did take the seats out i did that off camera just because it was easier and you guys have seen me do it before uh, on the other videos i've done um but i've been just been kind of organizing some stuff that i'm keeping um i got some stuff out there that i will be selling or getting rid of trashing whatever anything like that um, I'm just trying to kind of organize it and gut it at the same time. Um, I, this, this video might span across a couple of days, so I may not post the whole thing until I'm like completely done gutting this whole car out, including the headliner and all that stuff. Um, so we'll see what happens. But um, really, after organizing and getting the seats out was the biggest like, you know, get over as far as that goes. But I'm thinking about how I want to go about gutting this car and really how I want to go about prepping it for, you know, cutting it and everything like that. Now, obviously the motor is still in it, transmission is still in it, and the drive shaft. So all of that has to come out before I can do any cutting um, because I don't want to have to cut through any of that crap. Um, there is no exhaust in the car or anything like that. So getting to the drive shaft will be pretty simple. Um, however, um, just kind of thinking about how I want to do it is going to be tricky just because of all the wiring in this car. Um, as you know, if you saw the video with the black car, um, when I gutted that car out, or at least the front half, behind this dash is a crap load of wiring that has to be removed. Um, and then also the wiring that goes kind of under the car, under the carpet, stuff like that, will either have to be removed or I will just end up cutting through it. I don't really know. Um, kind of what I want to do is take all the wiring out of the car, um, even like all this like loomed up stuff right here. I kind of want to just remove every single bit of it. That way I have I have a clean slate when I get to the trailer aspect of it where I can wire things as far as like the taillights go because obviously those will need to work um, for the trailer. Uh, but really like having a clean slate will be nice when I get to the wiring part so I can run wiring for just the taillights. Um, and really I think that's all you need for this, um, just the taillights. And then you'd have to have a plug on my end for the car that I will be towing it with. Um, but that's kind of, I just wanted to go over that real quick. Um, I'll probably just put a lot of, do a lot of time lapses for me taking out some stuff just because it's easier for me to do. Um, and I, I think that most of you guys have probably done a lot of this tearing apart stuff, but most of this stuff I have done, but anything I haven't done, I'm probably going to pick up the camera again and show you guys how to do it. Or you guys can watch me struggle, um, you know, as far as getting stuff out on um, the dash, I kind of have an idea how to get out. So because I have done it in the other car before, sorry. Um, so that'll be fun. And then obviously the pillars I did go over in one of my previous videos when I was removing the interior from the black car. But um, it shouldn't be too bad, don't mind this. I was also messing with that on how to get it out as well as the light. The headliner is probably gonna be a pretty difficult part. I think you have to have the sunroof open for that. Um, I'm not completely sure, but I think you do because there are some bolts that go across the top. Um, so that'll be interesting. And then obviously removing all of the side pieces here. Uh, but yeah, that's really about it. Just want to kind of give a, a walk through here and I'm just going to kind of get to work as far as where I want to go with it. I think I'm going to start on the center console areas. I'm getting the center console out, which most of it already is. So a lot of the job there has already been done for me. Um, not for me. I did do it all. I did remove all the other stuff out of it to swap it over. However, um, that kind of helps me now where I have to get everything else out. Um, so we'll see what happens, but, uh, hopefully you can get this thing kind of gutted today. I don't really know where I want to stop, but I'll probably just go until sundown. So, um, yeah, but I'll also, I'll, I'll make sure I do show you guys how to get carpets out stuff like that because a lot of people want to swap carpets out i did do it on my other car and i did not record it um so i'll show you guys how to do that in these cars at least if you want to do it the easy way a hard way would be to remove the heater heater core crap and but most people don't they just cut it and i'll show you guys where to cut in the event that you ever want to swap your carpets out anything like that um but yeah i'll go ahead and just set it up here in a minute and i will get to working taking stuff apart so let's see what happens let's see what i get done All right, 
right, so the center console is removed. Um, that wasn't too bad, just like I said, because it was already basically done. Um, I'm going to remove the rear carpet now. I haven't done this in a wagon before. Um, it probably isn't really difficult. Um, everything is already out of the way, like this item, or that side paneling, um, the pillar molding. Um, pretty much everything is out of the way that I think would cause this to have an issue. Um, I don't think there's any bolts right there. So this should be pretty straightforward. Um, I might have to finesse these around somehow or another. Um, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, but yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try and yank this thing out. I'll leave it on regular video. So if I have to cut it at all, I can. Um, but we'll see what happens. I've never seen the rear carpet of an E39 touring out or even a sedan. And then I haven't had one. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, but let's get at it. This thing is so oh well, this thing is so molded to itself. It's actually kind of tough to pull up, but So first hiccup looks like it's going to be a wire on the e-brake. Um, I don't really, that doesn't matter in this car, the wire doesn't at least, um, because this car is not going to be a car ever again, so we're going to yank that out, but if you're doing this on your car that you drive, wouldn't recommend. I'm going to yank that out and figure out what other wires are in the way here. And then push these through. So it looks like if you were doing this in any car, in any scenario, you would have to cut down the middle right there. So I'm going to go grab some cutters or something to cut that with. Because the reason you have to cut it in the middle is only because of the wiring right here, the loom. Looks like it would be a problem um, to get through or to get behind. You wouldn't be able to put it behind the carpet, it looks like because there's no there's no cut straight through as well as the e-brake of course um you only have to cut this part though you don't have to cut the back part so i'm gonna go do that real quick i'll just cut this part out there we go that actually help might not have to shorten that at all once that is done, the carpet can now come out. Uh, that didn't work. Let's just set that up. And here we are. Now with the exposed undercarriage here. To be honest, if I would, were to cut across that brace right in front of it, probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Cut right in front of the brace because it follows the it follows the door line. I'd have to chop it right here though at the car, so that'd be kind of awkward. Unless I went in an angle and it would be angled like I'd want it to be, but yeah interesting um i guess the next thing is going to be the front carpets which i do have to clean out because all the crap is up there now 
but yeah that about does it for this on the rear carpet that wasn't too bad honestly not as bad as i thought i think the hardest parts were those but if you're ever doing the rear carpet it may be easier to pull the front ones out first and then do the rears but that'll be determined i'll, I'll uh let you guys know on that one and see if it would be easier that way or not because i'm gonna pull these out next and see what happens so yeah getting there maybe maybe not a lot of wiring it looks like to pull out of this car so that'll be interesting and fun but most of this crap is speaker wire anyways and i don't think we're going to use any of that so um there's no point in keeping speakers in the roof i don't see a reason for that and then obviously the, these back doors the tweeters when, when do they ever work anyways right so i don't know if i'll keep those either but we'll see what happens um on to the next part, I suppose. Let's get it. Next thing I'm doing is pulling up this foam crap, which you kind of can see in the camera, kind of can't. Um, because we all hate this stuff. I hate this stuff. And... I just gotta move some stuff real quick out of the way. Yeah, I'm selling this thing if anybody may want it. It's the cargo cover. Um, I'll probably post it on my Instagram or Facebook, one of the two. And see if I have any buyers for it. I'm not really sure on the price point. Probably a hundred bucks, maybe seventy-five, eighty, something along those lines. Um, but I'm going to be removing this stuff. As many of you know, even in the sedans, I think this stuff is in. It uh, deteriorates like nobody's business. I guess it's made for sound deadening. I would assume that's that's its use, but I don't really care about that in the car. That's I'm not gonna need it anymore. Let's move these power wires out of the way here. Oh, it actually goes behind the. Wish we can rip it. Most of it though. This stuff is awful. Straight to the trash cans where this is all going. Alright, now that's removed. Um, interesting. I have full access to the gas tanks now, which, if I remember correctly, still have gas in them. Now, I'm not sure how much is left, but I know there is some in there. For some reason, this didn't break around this one, so let's finish that off real quick. That. Stuff didn't want to break. Shocking. As brittle as it is. But this car's pretty clean on the bottom. I know some of the northern people probably see this and think this is like the cleanest thing ever. Just because no rust anywhere. Floorboards are pretty clean, which tells me that. Very little water leaks happened. It looks like maybe some water leaked down there. Um, a very big problem with the um, really E39s in general is those vapor barriers that look like that. And the back doors will leak and put water puddles in the back carpet. Um, now, I don't know if it's, I'm sure it happened to this one a couple of times, but the carpet seemed to have saved it or I stopped it. I know it happened once in my other car over there. Um, but. This one looks to be pretty clean for the most part. Interesting though. I don't know what that is. That tube thing. Whatever's going to be in that. I don't know. Um, but 
Yeah, I guess it's not going to be on the front carpet. Let's get that. All right, so for the front carpet, there are a few places you want to cut out if you're not, I guess really if you're doing it the only way that this car was made to pull carpet out of. Because if you wanted to pull it the way that BMW wants you to pull it, this whole core heater core thing right here has to come out. And you can imagine how difficult that will be if we remove the entire thing. Um, would take forever and you'd probably have yeah a lot of time stuff so you know something that you don't have to worry about if you just cut the carpet um so i'm going to show you guys a, a few spots that you're going to want to cut it at i have made a couple cuts here but i haven't cut it all yet um so the first thing really if you, if you have a manual transmission this will be a lot easier for you because you won't have this big blob right here um but if you don't have a manual and you do have the automatic um you'll be in the same situation with as far as like stuff in the way but um firstly you want to cut back here in the middle um so cut right down the middle of it um you can use this thing for reference if you really want to and also cut in the middle up here like i did um so you'll cut right there and then you'll come there's like a vent right here that goes across the middle and you will take out the vent there's a clip right here on top you can kind of see it right there um take that clip out i did not because like i said this none of this crap matters for me um because this car is getting cut but once that is out the vent is out just kind of watch pretty much the only thing you're going to want to watch for is like cables that run under like down there because you don't want to cut into those cables um but you'll basically just make a line right right across the front of this vent which is what i did right here you see i literally just cut it right across the middle no problems there um it is kind of tough to cut carpet wise um and then the next cut you will be making excuse me this is kind of difficult to really see i'm gonna have to watch through the camera but pretty much you'll cut while also being careful up here you'll cut as far up as you can across this like area where you can actually reach it don't obviously don't cut where you can't reach but cut all the way up here i'm like shredding this crap up here um cut all the way up here you can follow this little line right here if you really wanted to i think i will on this car i think i might have a my own car actually um but if you want to cut higher you're you're free to um right there and literally in the same exact spot up here you'll cut alongside that thing kind of like the wall um just as high up as you can really um and once you cut those things out you're pretty much golden um the carpet will come out after that um as far as if you don't have anything else in the way but just make sure you have your trims like this trim um this side trim the dead pedal and the other trim over there out of the way before you try to pull the carpet as it won't even come out as well as all the other crap that is missing from my car now um so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and cut these um i'll try and put it in video but my knife this this knife the trusty rusty kind of sucks so i might have to go find another one um but yeah just make sure you use something sharp just make sure not to cut through any wires or anything like that there are wires behind these parts up here um, so just cut lightly and take it take it a step at a time because it can get pretty annoying this stuff is pretty thick to cut through so it's kind of difficult if you don't have a sharper knife um but i'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and i'll come back when i'm done with that all right so because you cut it in the middle right there once you cut one side up top right there you can kind of see the cut i followed i started right here and went up you have to go all the way to the top like i said if you want to go further in you absolutely can i probably should have gone further in if this was a car i was keeping um but like i've mentioned it is not so it doesn't matter um but once that's cut um that's literally all you have to do cutting wise and whenever you install your new carpet that you're putting in from another vehicle just make sure that cut is kind of similar you may have to trim it up a little bit on the new carpet if it's not the exact same but if it doesn't meet up don't worry um if it's too short or if it's too long you can trim it or if it's too short it really doesn't matter um, it, at all it, it's not going to make a difference um, but once that's done literally you'll have to kind of play with the wires here so you can see make sure they're in like these little clips so you just pop them out and then push it over and all this stuff right here ready for that oh now i did leave all that crap in the carpets in, in hopes that it would stay there so we'll see how that goes but 
I'm gonna kind of pull down from the top here. There we go. It's carpet's kind of glued in essentially in certain spots, so it is kind of finicky to get out. Let me put this right here. Is it gonna slide? Hopefully not. See right there, we are coming free. And bingo, she's out. And that is one side complete on the carpet. Whew. It is an annoyance to have to get these things out, but um. And that's done. Let's see how these look down here. These are notorious for being super rusty, which you don't normally have to rip that. If you're good enough, you can finagle that thing out of there, but I ripped it because I sucked. Um, normally in some cars, like if you get like a flood car E39, this is a really hot power source for like a lot of the items in the car. And what can happen if you get a lot of water in your floor pans or anything like that, this part right here likes to flood and in turn will cause, sorry, I'm trying to get this green clip out here. Oh, I'll just break it, that works too. Um, in turn, it will cause these to rust. Now, there's a little bit of surface rust on those, but nothing to worry about. I've seen these literally where they're all crusty and like completely rusted over. So this is actually pretty good. Um, my other car was like this as well, which is which is good to see. That means that it was taken care of as far as the person making sure that nothing leaked, anything like that. Not necessarily that nothing leaked, but that they wanted to make sure, or that person made sure that the car never had any issues. Um, that's one of the main power lines right there that I will probably take out. Let's see. Just fun taking these things apart. Oh, well, I can't take that off. That is held on by a bolt. Maybe I have the socket for it somewhere. Let's see, is it the trusty 10 millimeter? And it is, it looks like. Oh, but I probably don't have to get a good angle. No, I gotta get an extension for that one. Anyways. I'm gonna go ahead and get the passenger side out real quick. Go ahead and get that done before I start messing with other stuff. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of wiring that goes up up there too, as well as the DME, I believe, being up there as well. Um, but yeah, interesting, interesting finds for sure. I wonder why that's like there's so much foam on that one part in the firewall. It's interesting. Um, which I'm I'm wondering too. While I'm in here, if I see any sort of damage to the frame or chassis, anything like that from the wreck, um, this looks crumpled up, but it may just be how it's from the factory. Actually, I take that back. You can see right here that this plate is already peeling back. And yeah, this, this thing definitely sustained some damage back here. It's a dent right there, dent right there. It's crumpled up down here. So this is actually, it's crazy to see um, some more of the crumple from the accident. I figured there had to be some somewhere else, but I wasn't sure where I'd find it. Um, but that makes complete sense. Um, but, yeah, it looks, it looks like there's even a dent in the... Um, a dent in the trans tunnel. But I don't know if that would be accident related or not. That's interesting. Let me, let me, let me stop rambling on here. Um, I'm going to get off that other side real quick. And I'll get back on this thing once that's done. I did forget to add in while I'm over here. Um, the pass or the driver's side, I'm sorry. The driver's side is a little bit more difficult to uh, worry about because once we make that cut right there, which is really all, which is the only cut you need to make, um, the next feat is getting the gas pedal out of the floor. Um, in my other car, is this was a pain to get out. Um, the way it is like, the way it's clipped in there is really stupid. 
Um, so I'm going to attempt to get this out, but you really have to just basically pry on the bottom of it, pry up, and you should be able to get it out. And I think also if you really wanted to, you could get the, uh, this clip, there's a clip up here out as well, but I have to figure out how that one clips in before I go to remove it. So, um, yeah, this part's kind of a pain in the butt. And then once that's out, you have to, I don't think you have to unplug if you have an automatic, at least. If you have a manual, then this is not a problem. You can just, this it's just a like a stub that you can unscrew. Um, but with the automatics, this is, this is the kick down switch. And it is something else you have to worry about getting around. There's like a little plate in the bottom of it that you also have to pry up and it'll let it be free. So um, I'm gonna try that real quick and I will get back if I have any problems. And anything I can show you guys to help you guys get it out any easier. Um, Cause I'm sure this is gonna be a pain here. Um, but we'll see. All right, so after fighting with this stupid gas pedal for a little bit, I have decided to make an executive decision to just cut around it and then take the carpet out from behind. Um, there is a video you can watch on here that depicts how to get the pedal out, but honestly, I just don't feel like doing it right now. I really want to get this carpet out of here. Um, so for my sake of the video, <laughs> I have cut right there and right here, and I'm going to pull all this carpet out. And once it's all out, maybe I'll be able to show how the gas pedal clip works, but it is an insane difficult task to get that stupid thing out so that's what the compromise is going to be right now um so i'm going to put you guys right here and pull this carpet out real quick all right Okay, let's see if I can show what we're looking at here. So, I was told there is a clip right here, which, if I'm being honest, I don't even see on this pedal. So I was lied to. Um, but this is what it looks like. And I don't know how to get it off. I'll be honest, not really sure. But that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. Um, I got a lot done, I think, as opposed to what I started with in the beginning of the video. Um, I got a pretty good majority of the interior gutted out. I think in the next video, it's going to be removing the dash stuff. Um, I'll take out the dash, the cluster. Um, I'll probably end up leaving the steering wheel in here just because I really don't need any of that. Um, and I've been thinking about how I want to do the wiring crap. And I'm really thinking about when I go to cut it to just chop the wiring where it's at um, just because I think it's going to be easier than trying to pull the whole car because once I chop the wiring where it's at here wherever I cut it then I can um, just pull it out of the car from there I mean I'm gonna pull the hot wires out because it only goes to that right there and I think one of them goes to the engine bay um, but I believe that if I just cut the wiring where it's at and then pull it all back It'll honestly probably be easier for me than trying to do it the other way where I dewire the entire car. Um, that would be pretty difficult. But that will be um, pretty much it for today. That's where I'm going to stop. So um, I'll probably end up just posting this one, kind of gutting the interior for the most part. And I think next video, like I mentioned, the dash, I might try and do headliner. But we'll see how that goes um lots of work there but it'll be a learning experience so we'll try that out um but thank you guys for watching um i do appreciate any of the love and all the love um and i will see you all in the next video peace